Good morning, Corey. Here's your machine, the Breville Oracle BES990 in silver. So, as you saw in the photos, it's in decent condition. It's very, very presentable, I would say. Um, you know, it, it is a used unit and it does have some scratches around the front here mainly. Um, and the, the cracked power button, I've put a sticker on it. Um, and also a couple of nicks on the right hand side. Generally, very decent, I would say I would give it a 7.5 out of 10 for the condition on the outside. It's as new on the inside now that it's been serviced. So it's had the the air pump for the steam on replaced um, and also a general service, so checking for leaks, cleaning, etc, etc. Um, so it's ready to go and it shouldn't give you any issue anytime soon. Um, and now it's ready to make your coffee. So usually it takes about five to ten minutes to turn on and warm up. Um, it is a dual boiler machine so it has the two boilers to heat up. I have just turned it on beforehand to make this shorter, so it's almost ready to go. Um, uh, I like to begin my sessions with a blank shot, so I'll, I usually keep the handle on the machine um, because you can actually program the machine to turn on in the morning for you. So you can program it to wake up at 7 a.m. so that you can use it by 7.10, for example. Um, so if, if you keep it on for a while and you keep the handle on and even put your cups up on top here on the lid, you'll be able to um, make coffee right away. So even your cups will be nice and warm on the top lid here. Um, but if you, if you are in a hurry, you just turn it on and you want to go right away, you can make a coffee. But if you want the, the coffee to be nice and hot um, and uh, you want it to be to the right flavors, you want to run a blank shot. So a blank shot is putting the handle on. It's empty right now. Putting your cup underneath. Oops. And just run some hot water. So let's uh, make this into a double shot. Let's change the milk to 60 degrees. Uh, yeah, so a blank shot pretty much is just running hot water through the system to warm things up. Um, and this would also clean any oils or coffee grounds that are built up in the group head. So that's a good step to do, I would say. Here's your milk jug, by the way. Yep. It'll go for 30 seconds for the double shot. You can do that as long or as short as you want, by the way. So it's very, very programmable, this machine. You can change the grind size, of course. You can change the strength of your coffee, the amount of hot water it will dispense, the milk temperature, and the milk froth level. So you can make your own drink if you'd like. Just pouring some milk now because we're making a latte after all. <clears throat> um, so I have filled my jug about halfway with cold milk from the fridge. And it's important to use cold milk for these machines. That's just my cat wanting some milk. Please ignore her. Um, this is the cup. Now it's nice and nice and hot. I can put it on the side for now. And when you take out the port filter, you want to dry it out straight away uh, before you grind the coffee. So you want to start with a dry port filter. That's very important. You can also use a scale to measure. I recommend the scale honestly. Um, it'll make life easier and it'll make your coffees more consistent. So usually uh, I use the scale for measuring the amount of coffee I grind. And the amount of coffee that comes out of the of the spouts when I'm brewing. Uh, in this case, the amount that the coffee is ground into the pour filter, the amount of coffee ground into the pour filter, is automatic. So the machine will dose pretty much the same amount every time because it's a, it's it's, the, it's got that automatic tamper and the automatic dosing. It will sense how much coffee there is here 
you don't have to press any buttons so you can change into the single basket and it will dose just the same uh, it will it'll know when to stop so this is the double basket here uh, I think this is set to 22 grams you can change the dose if you wanted to by going manually into the mechanism here at the moment it's at a decent it's it's at a good level it's 22 grams so uh, that's a lot of coffee and it will be a strong coffee for you uh, which is good so So yeah, as I was saying, it usually doses about 22 grams, um, and when you when you take it out, you might get loose coffee here and there. So just turn it upside down into the bin or onto the juke tray or whatever, just to get rid of those loose loose coffees, <laughs> loose coffee grounds. Um, that's 22 and a half, perfect. So this the mechanism in here can can be adjusted to give you between I think 18 grams and 23, 24. So you can pack a lot of coffee into this. I wouldn't recommend going all the way to 24, it's, it's too much coffee. Um, I, I usually would prefer around 20, 22 maximum. So um, this is 22 and a half. It's a lot of coffee, but yeah, like I said, you, you'll be getting a strong coffee, which is good. Clean the edges before locking it into the machine. And put it about six o'clock position. Um, you don't have to push it all the way to the right. You don't have to force it actually. Just tighten it as much as necessary, and in this case, right about dead center is, is perfect. Uh, here's my cup. I'm gonna dunk the hot water into the into the sink, and at this stage, you want to add your syrups or sugar, whatever you prefer with your coffee. I'm gonna add a touch of hazelnut syrup. And like I said, I'm going to use a scale to measure the output of the coffee. So, uh, now let's talk about the settings of the grinder. At the moment, it was on 28. So that's the grind size, how, how fine or how coarse the coffee comes out of the grinder. Um, you want to set that to a number that gives you the right amount of coffee in the right amount of time. And what I mean by that is, if I set this to the correct settings, I will be getting the double shot, which is 40 grams. Or let's say let's say 45 40 to 45 grams I would be getting the double shot in about 30 seconds so like I said the double button here the double brew button will give me 30 seconds of brew time in that 30 seconds I want to get about 40 to 45 grams of coffee coming out of the spouts which is about double of the input so input was 22 output 44 that's the ratio people use most of the time so if I have the, the grind size on the correct settings, I would get about 40 to 45 grams in the 30 seconds. If it's too fine, so it's choking the machine, I would get less than 40 grams. If it's too coarse and very large particles, I would get more than 45 grams. Um, hope that was, that's not too complicated. It's, uh, there will be a little bit of experimentation on your side. Uh, I have set it to 28, which I think is in the right ballpark. We'll test it in the video. The only way to know is to make a coffee, really. Uh, we may not get it right, but we, we're probably very close uh, in this video. So let's see. I'm going to use my scale, like I said, to gauge what 45 grams looks like. Oh, sorry, to, to measure what comes out. But if you don't have a scale, you can still sort of gauge um, and get like a, like a milliliter cup or something, like a measuring, like a measuring cylinder or whatever they call it. Like it. It's an espresso cup with markings on it. Uh, all right, I think we... We are in the main menu now, so let's go to latte. Let's make this into a double. And let's put the froth at seven. Sorry, 60 degrees Celsius and the froth at seven. So this is a dual boil machine. You can um, you can froth at any time, you can brew at any time. But for the sake of the video, I'll be making them separately.
Looks like we've set it a touch too fine. So the coffee's coming out, but it's coming out quite slow. I don't think we'll be getting 40 grams in by the end of the by the end of the 30 seconds. So I think the next step is to change it from 28 to. Yeah, that's that's not that's not 40 grams. Um, but that's a that's a very strong coffee now. It's very concentrated, and. Yeah, that's that's not um, that's not forty grams. It's only fifteen grams. Anyway, I don't recommend this, but you can brew again after the machine has stopped, uh, just to get rid, just to get um, extract all the coffee. Which is what I'm gonna do now. I'll stop it then. This is exactly 40 on that dot. So this is what 40 looks like. If you're wondering volumetric, um, the, the, the actual look of 40 grams. Um, if you don't have a scale, for example. So, grind size number 20, 28 was, uh, was quite, quite fine for this machine. Sorry, for these beans, I mean. Each bean would be different. Um, the next step would, would be to increase it to 28, sorry, from 28 to 32. It doesn't have to be even numbers, it, it's just easier to remember. So let's uh, keep it on 32. I'll let you figure figure the correct ground size when you use the machine. Uh, because of course, whatever ground size I set would be different to yours. So um, it, it, it's all in the bean, really, and it also depends on the age of the bean. So if you're using fresh beans, you'll probably, you don't have to grind as fine as I'm doing right now. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to knock out the, the, the coffee into the, into the uh, knock box. It's just at an awkward angle. There we go. And once, once I've done that, I'm going to run another blank shot. This time to clean the shower screen and the water filter. So just press the double button. Just to re rinse things. So keep your machine nice and clean. That's done. And you can you can do this daily or weekly. You just grab a tissue or a towel and wipe off what's up there. part of the string. So purge your wand, what I just did now, just to turn it on and get that steam going, get rid of any condensation inside there. And press. And that's 60 degrees Celsius, and that's a very, very foamy milk, which is very good. Uh, make sure you have a wet towel ready. You want to gently take it out and wipe off the steam on straight away. It'll get, it gets really hot in there, so uh, you want to wipe it off straight away. Otherwise, the milk will be sort of baked on the on the wand, and it'll be really tough to remove. So the sooner you remove it, the easier it is. The, the better it is for the machine. And when you push it down, which you have to push it down, it'll clean itself. So it'll purge. It 
it will purge um, steam just to clean the holes and the insides of any milk. If, if you don't do this step, the holes will be blocked by the milk residues and you won't be able to steam unless you clean it out. So that's all you need to do to keep your machine nice and clean. Um, let's pour the milk, it's, it's looking very good. So once you get the milk, you want to knock it down on the knock it down on the um, bench to break any bubbles, if there are any, and then swirl it around a few, a few, for a few seconds, uh, just to kind of mix it up. And I forgot to mention, you have you have we also have the uh, the manual setting. So if you keep the one at this position and then hold the button, it'll allow you to manually froth like a barista. Um, if you ever want to do that. I think it does a fantastic job automatically. It's a beautiful foam. My cat is baking for milk. I'll just give her some. Yeah, so here's the final result. It's a very smooth cup. It's a latte. Oh, maybe a cappuccino, because I think I put the, the foam setting too high. Uh, you know, with the new air pump and all. Uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the machine. I think you'll love it. Um, and thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Um, just a few notes on the cleaning on this machine. Um, as long as you change the water filters on time, you do the cleaning cycle on time, you're good to go. Just avoid doing the descale cycle. So try your best to not descale. Uh, a lot of people have reported the descale cycle breaking their steam wand or like the steam boiler. Steam not working after descale. It's a documented phenomenon on the internet. So I would recommend to not descale, uh, especially with the water here in Melbourne. Very, very clean. Uh, water that we have and soft we don't usually need to descale appliances all that often and yeah that's pretty much all i needed to say hope you enjoy thanks